Hey guys, Bruno Build Show, talking today about architecture, art, and music. What all those things have to do with building, right? And why understanding what makes great art, architecture, music can make you a better builder. Today on the Build Show. So guys, I got challenged by John Dangerstein on Instagram, his story, asking me to look at this historic building and say, all right, Brent, break it down, right? And so basically he was up in Montreal and he saw this historic church and he said, hey, what's the deal? How's it put together? And so what I did was I, first of all, I had to find the church. And then I had to find a far enough picture back so we could actually look at it and study it, okay? And so when we did that, I just began to play with it, okay? I began to look at it and go, okay, how's this organized? And I realized those three arches on the front of the building were really important. So I made a circle, okay? And certainly in Gothic architecture with those two circles that create that, that Gothic point are really important. So there's a radius there. So I took the outside radius of those two outside arches and lo and behold, that circle, those arches are the same radius. And so all of a sudden we begin to have a way to organize this church. Notice too that that center arch, which is taller, right? The top of the circle kind of defines that top point, right? So now we're centered. We've got an organized bay, right? And so I took that same circle and I put it above it. And what happened now? All of a sudden that rose window above, the top of that circle defines that rose window. And then I took another circle from the bottom of the rose window and sure enough, same radius, same circle defines the top peak of the church. Another circle begins to define all the different parts and pieces. And so what I'm doing there, guys, and what's happening is there's this thing in architecture called regulating lines, right? And regulating lines are this overriding group and organization of how the building is put together. It's the reason why you stand in front of a building and go, gosh, I don't know why I like this, but I love this building. I'm so attracted to it, right? Because it's organized and beautiful. And here's the deal. All great architecture, art, and music was designed historically this way, right? All of these things were put together. There's a print from Goya. It's a, it's a bullfighter. It's just the acrobatics of a bullfighter. It's this guy flying in the air. Well, to look at it, you're like, oh, that's kind of an interesting picture. But when you just crisscross, take the corners of that thing and just draw lines across it, all of a sudden you begin to look at that print in a much different way. You go, oh, well, look at the, the backsplay of the bull's angles that that, it, that that line is actually, you know, parallel to him. And, and look how it, how, it, how it also plays with the body of the, of the bullfighter as he's in the air. And the other one, you know, the, the neck of the bull and the foot of the bullfighter. And all of a sudden you're like, huh, that's really interesting. It's almost organized, right? It's almost like someone uh, did it on purpose. And then if you dig, dig down even farther, if we lay the golden ratio over top of that, right, which is that three to five golden, perfect, beautiful design, which, which relates to all beautiful things in nature, you all of a sudden see that again, that that, that pole that that bullfighter is on is almost right at the point of the square of the first part of that golden ratio. And his head is actually stuck in the, that small a square up there. All of a sudden, guys, we're looking at that picture in a much different light. And when we drop that triangle back across that, we see that all of a sudden, this isn't just some simple print. It's actually organized in a way that's beautiful. And what I want to encourage you guys is that great architecture, okay, and great design is like this, okay? It's studyable and it's organized. And the reason why you can look at a building and go, it's a masterpiece, it's because it was designed by somebody very carefully and it was organized in a way that just brings all these parts and pieces together. Palladio would organize his buildings inside and out. And the reason why he's kind of the most famous architect of all time even though he's a stonemason, even though he's a master builder, just like you and I, he actually dialed down farther and farther and farther and realized that he went to Italy and studied the ancient buildings, right? He became a student of the past. Looking at some of his buildings, there's, there's one building where our tour guide showed us this house and he would actually design rooms inside the house so they were proportional to one another. And you'll see 32 in the, is, that, is that main body inside that house and then 16, right? There's a proportion, there's a one to two proportion. You'll notice that front room has a three to five proportion, right? The golden ratio, again, that perfect design. These things aren't accidents, right? These things are by design and beautiful. And music is the same way. Music can be something that changes your life, right? Music can be something that moves you so emotionally. Yet, 
music is also not something that is random. If I went down and sat down at the piano and just randomly just started throwing my hands down, it would be chaotic mess, right? Remember that scene of Ferris Bueller when he's playing the clarinet? <laughs> Never had one lesson, right? I was watching Groundhog Day the other day. Bill Murray's sitting in the diner, and all of a sudden, Mozart's Concerto Number 16 comes up, and it's just beautiful and clean and perfect, and he's just inspired. He's just looking around like, this is the greatest thing ever. Is anybody else noticing this? And he goes off to take piano lessons. Music can move us that way. And if you look at that Mozart's concerto, right, this simple concerto that's so beautiful and so clean, it's, it's, it's organized, right? There's three parts, right? It's organized, that, that rule of three, right? It's in C major, right? C major means that it is organized around a, a, a collection of notes, right? And if you just listen to it, and realize that it's all within these chords and how simple and clean and beautiful it is. Ah, right? It's awesome. So the point is, guys, is that I don't want you just slapping buildings together. I don't want you to be an assembler of houses. Give me your brick, give me your windows, give me your hardware, I'll put it all together, right? There should be a design philosophy that, that holds the things together. You can, okay, dial down really, really far so that there are regulating lines that make sense right? So that your houses look more beautiful. By being students of the past, you can understand how these rules work. You can understand this process and become better builders. Okay, guys, when I was at North Bennett Street, uh, they had a traditional furniture making program, still do. It's very famous. And they build historic pieces of furniture, the Chippendale, Sheraton, Hibble White furniture. And the reason they do that, okay, is not because they expect students to necessarily do that, but they say, if you can build the old stuff, you can build anything. The same is true with building today. If you know how to build a historic Georgia mansion, right, and understand the parts and pieces and how it was done and why it was designed and, and all those parts, you can build anything. Anything, right? And so I want to encourage you to study the past, look at these things, and realize that all these buildings are things that you can look at and study. There's a great book called The Geometry of Design. It is an awesome book that breaks down some design ideas, the golden ratio, rule of threes, and, they, and it shows contemporary art, even to the modern VW bug, of how to put these things together. Jonathan Hale, very influential book for me early on, Old Way of Seeing. He spends a ton of time on regulating lines and why historic buildings, 1800s, 1700s, make more sense than even buildings in the 1920s, right? And so he's really one who really caught me onto these designs. All great resources and great ways for you to learn a lot more about this. Hey guys, if you want to direct message us on Instagram and ask me to look at a building and help you figure out what's, what's going on, why you like it or why you don't like it, I'd love to take those challenges and uh, really dig into them. I love this stuff and would love to share more about it with you guys. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.